So now superimposed stat loads. What are these? These are uh, a kind of uh, you know loads apart from the dead loads and are representing the different machines, the furniture, the fixtures, railings, light poles, ducts, utilities, conduits, everything. Everything apart from the dead load, which is a part as a part of the system, uh, which is there as a part of a system trying to run it operationally or uh, HVAC, MEP, anything. The structural engineer has to take into consideration all these values and they have to put that into the software, the model that we're creating. And these have to be categorized into SIDL. So values of each individual entity has to be specified by the plant and the DBR. So the, the different types of SIDL, long welded trail, rail paths, fastenings, parapet walls, solar panels, cable trays, length loading, etc. Now, this will be basically specified into the DBR, and for the sake of the discussion, we'll just take it as 45 kN per meter. <clears throat> so, this is actually from a model which I made in uh, Midas. So, this is how I applied. This is a line load it's for typical to gearing. This is indicated by bearing. Okay. Uh, and this is a line drainage model. And this is indicating that there is a parapet wall, the SIDL of which was 7.3. So, I'm applying it applying it throughout as a line load, okay, because the values is per meter. Uh, coming out to one of the most important loads, line loads. So basically the game over here is only about the axle load and the number of tracks that are going to have. So the axle load is basically we have got some codes which will uh, pre-specify for you what are the different types of loads for the vehicles, for the cars, for everything. If at all, uh, or the DBR has to specify in its uh, report that the axle loads have to be such and such. So the designs that we did for Pune and Mumbai Metro, these are the values for which we designed it. It was a six, uh, eight ton, uh, or you can say 16 ton per axle. Uh, you see over here, it's from the top view. How it is divided for every week at eight ton. So if you have four bogies, the lo light load that you're going to apply in Midas Civil or Stat Pro or whatever software you're going to use, it has to look like this. And if anyone of you has uh, already has had some experience in designing or has designed some flyover or bridge, he knows that we can do exactly like this in Stat Pro. Okay, if you're doing this in Stat Pro, what we'll have to do is we'll have to create an iteration. So maybe you'll have to create a thousand steps from point A to point B, you'll have to create 1000 or 10,000 number of iterations. So for it, every iteration, this will move maybe one mm or whatever you can specify. If it is one mm, it is very difficult, maybe 100 mm. Okay, so based upon the detail or the level of uh, detail you want, you can have either one meter or uh, 100 mm intervals, and this load will travel upon a model. If you're using Midas civil, Midas is a very efficient way of uh, designing and analyzing the bridges. So if you're using that, uh, you have a pre-built uh, command to define your vehicle. So whatever sort of vehicle you want, you can define it. All this load, these distances, this can be pre-specified into Midas and uh, you can directly have it. Uh, once you define the track on Midas, you can, I think if I have, uh, no, I'm not. Okay, if you define the track on the Midas uh, software, you can directly run the vehicle on Midas and you can get your results very quickly. <clears throat> so yeah, as I said, uh, the live load, this is a lever arm for bogey is 1.83 acting, acting at the centroid, maximum number of successive cars, all of this has to be specified in the DBR. Okay, uh, braking and traction, all right. For, like we know that the train is going to run on the tracks, but there's also one thing that the train is also going to stop on the tracks, right? So you might have experience like when you're going in the car and you put a, a sudden brake to it, there's going to be a friction and traction on the tires, right? So just imagine if the vehicle is, uh, if the bogey is running on uh, on the tracks and suddenly if you press the brakes, so they're going to, the tracks are going to experience some braking and traction and that track uh, experience of loads is going to be transferred to the girders, from the girders to the piers, from the piers to the foundation. So this has to be taken into consideration and our consideration is 20% of the vertical life. Okay, <clears throat> so live load is one thing, but the combination of live loads, it is a completely different thing. So uh, the possible variation of live loads moving on the span is completely dependent upon, uh, dependent upon the number of tracks that you're dealing with. So uh, 
if you are in bombay or uh, in uh, pune or uh, in delhi you've got some metro lines which got, which have four number of tracks all right uh, for most of them you'll have only two tracks like uh, what is indicated over here there's one over here and one over here and there will be some transitions okay but if you have got more number of lanes you have to be uh, accurately indicating all these values in your combination table all right so if you have four uh, if you have two number of tracks i'll show you over here so uh, as uh, as for the case that we are dealing with if you have got two box girders on either sides and these are your reactions from the uh, from the girder above into the bearings this is the top view of the uh, of the two spans so i am assuming that the spans have only two tracks track number 1 and track number 2 so these tracks are running parallel to each other and it is possible that there is a transition as well okay so just to simulate the simple movement of train on the track you have to have a certain number of combinations all right so let us say uh, this is the top view that i'm looking at this is track 1 and track 2 and these are different cases this is case number 1 number 2 3 and 4 all right uh, span number 1 and span number 2 so this blue bar is basically indicating that there is a train over here okay train or a bogey or a car whatever you want to call it so there is a train over here on track number 1 on the left hand side of span number 1 there is no train over here there's no train over here no train over here in the second case there are two different trains uh, i am simulating what what this is actually doing the variation is trying to simulate how the trains are going to run upon the bridge okay so you might have a case wherein two trains are tailing each other or they had to park here for some reason so this is the second case the third case is that two trains at the same time are running with the same you know neck to neck and at a point they are together at the same time simultaneously on span number 1 but there's no train over here on span number 2 uh the last case is a case wherein all the tracks on the right and the left on track number 1 and track number 2 are completely occupied by trains <coughs> what this basically enables us to do is to understand what would be the possible uh, load that would be acting or what would be the possible governing load that we would be designing it for looking at this you might think why do we need if we have this sort of value obviously anyone would say that we will have a higher load value for this and why do we need this or why do we need this if we are designing it for this but that is not the case you know every single load uh, combination will give you a different moment value which will be a governing load uh, load case in itself so if you see over here <coughs> or if i say from this from this case case number 4 this will give you maximum actual force okay but the transverse moment value that will be getting over here it is going to be balanced by these two trains all right so this load case since there is nothing on track 2 and there's only uh, the only the track 1 is fully occupied the maximum moment that will be receiving on the transverse end is from this load case for for case number 3 since both of these uh, spans are completely loaded uh, sorry both of these tracks are completely loaded on span 1 over here you have a higher chance of getting a maximum longitudinal moment and over here you can get the single largest uh, single span torque value so when you are designing the bridge you have to take into considerations everything you cannot simply rely your uh, assumption and your design upon a maximum axial load case or a maximum longitudinal moment case maybe if over here you are getting a maximum axial load it is possible that you are going getting only half the longitudinal moment from this case or maybe even lesser transverse moment from this case over here so it is very important to take into considerations what are the different values for different load cases in this case i had only shown you two tracks uh when we were doing pune uh, when we were designing pune metro i had uh, i had some spans which had six 
tracks. So at that point, it is a very complicated uh, configuration because these models, uh, the line model that you see is actually from MIDAS. This line model is from MIDAS. So this line model has to be appropriately represented. And you see uh, these uh, uh, bisecting lines. All of these are the bracings, or some of them are bracing because this was from a steel a steel span. So all of these have to be represented properly in the MIDAS software. So if you have got six number of tracks, you have to represent it accordingly. You have to create all the combinations accordingly, and you have to take care of these loads as well. Okay. Moving on. <coughs> wind loads. You know, uh, wind acts on two portions actually three portions but usually what we do is we don't consider the uh, wind acting on piers so the two portions are metro bogie and gutter viaduct there's also one more portion which is piers but that is not too much into consideration so the wind, wind rose diagram this has to be specified in the dvr or if not specified with the dvr you have to mention to the client what is our source of reference and what is the highest wind velocity that we're going to take okay so if basically what is the wind, load diagram, wind rose diagram is basically it is showing you uh, the different uh, wind velocities as per the direction. So looking at this, you will understand that over here, there is a minimum amount of uh, wind speed that you're coming, uh, we're getting. In the south, uh, southwest, we're getting the highest value. So for the design to take this highest value. So uh, that is why uh, wind is a very important uh, aspect in the design consideration. So that is why you will see the, uh, the shape of the box cutter is very aerodynamic so that the winds are not completely impacted. Uh, impacting on the girder, as well as uh, from this IS 875 part three, this is the wind load that we are designed for 39 meters per second. Launcher loads. This is a very important consideration because you see the uh, the colossal machine that is actually traveling on the pier, and uh, <coughs> sorry, and the different stages of uh, launcher erection that uh, the peer has to experience so uh, it depends completely upon the different type of uh, launcher that you're using in both the pictures you see there are different types of girders one is a certain truss based another one is a, uh, a girder based uh, launcher but what they're basically doing is the same thing they are typically picking up box girders from a truck which is bring it from the fabrication yard and it is aligning the box girder into a very straight and uh, straight profile and then when it is completely fixed the pre post tensioning work is done and once the post tensioning work is done this is this becomes a rigid girder and it is directly simply placed over there nothing more okay so the launcher load case uh, in itself is a <laughs> is a very big consideration so if you are interested to know more about the launcher case if you want to uh, if you want me to elaborate you can directly have correspondence with me or if you want uh, we can have a separate webinar on the launches 